And now we come to one of the greatest controversies in all of human prehistory, the first settlement of the Americas. In the last lecture, we ended up very briefly in Siberia, in a crucible from which the first settlement of America stemmed. In this lecture, I'm going to examine this controversy from various angles. I'm going to begin by outlining the fundamental questions, and then I'll describe the two competing hypotheses for first settlement, very early or much later. Next, we'll analyze the evidence for very early settlement and conclude that the earliest well-documented site dates to about 14,000 years ago, immediately after the end of the Ice Age, which ended in 15,000 years. The third part of the lecture describes the lost continent of Beringia, the Bering Land Bridge, which joined Alaska and Siberia during the Ice Age. And we'll look briefly at the biological and linguistic evidence that derives Native American ancestry from northeastern Asia. And from there, we'll move on to a discussion of the archaeological evidence from Alaska and discuss the route southwards into the heart of North America by which the first Americans must have traveled into this virgin continent. And finally, we'll survey the limited evidence for human settlement around 14,000 years ago and the short-lived Clovis tradition, which began about 13,700 years ago and lasted for only 300 years. So our compass chronologically here, again, is relatively short, from the end of the Ice Age, or maybe somewhat earlier, 15,000 years ago, up to about 12,000. The first human settlement of the Americas is, as I've said, one of the great controversies of prehistory. There's something magical to scientists about having discovered the first, the best, but particularly the first. And, as we've said repeatedly in this course, the Americas were uninhabited by human beings until relatively late in prehistory. Why? They were far from the major centers of early human evolution in Africa and Asia. Also, they were in the far north. The only access was in the far north, across from Siberia to Alaska, because at this early time people did not have the ability to cross oceans on boats. The debates surround the routes, the age of first settlement, and the nature of the very first people, what their lifeway was like, and so on. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the debate is hampered by a lack of solid archaeological data. Unfortunately, also, there was a great deal of passion, and people adhere to a particular viewpoint and will not change it even in the face of firm evidence that it is wrong. This is, in short, a firestorm of competing views and a ferocious argument. We navigate through this at our peril and with great care. So the position I take here is going to be somewhat conservative for obvious reasons because what we're concerned with here are baselines of research rather than out there very controversial theories. One thing at the beginning that everybody agrees and that is that no archaic humans, no early Homo sapiens, no Homo erectus, no Neanderthals ever set foot in the new world. The Americas were first settled by anatomically modern humans, Homo sapiens sapiens. There is also general agreement that first settlement came from Northeast Asia by way of the Bering Strait, either by sea or land, because the Bering Strait was dry land for much of the late Ice Age after a hundred thousand years ago. Why? Because we know that sea levels were at least 300 foot lower during the Lace Ice Age than they are today. Why Northeast Asia? Simply the logic of geography, because this is where America and Siberia are closest. Any other way would involve a lengthy journey over open water. The debates surround three questions. When did people first settle in the Americas? What was their ultimate ancestry? And finally, what toolkit and lifeway did they bring with them? 
Were they big game hunters? Were they foragers for plants? Or what? These are the three great questions. The problem is that there's almost no data to substantiate any of the questions in any way. What I'm going to do now is look at the competing hypotheses. Two competing hypotheses, each with passionate advocates, address these questions and account for first settlement. A minority school of thought, and I stress minority, believes that the Americas were settled sometime during the last glaciation of the Ice Age, during that period when the Cro-Magnons flourished in Europe, perhaps even as early as 40,000 years ago. That's a very long time ago. Then there's the majority hypothesis, which argues that settlement took place at the very end of the Ice Age or shortly thereafter, perhaps as recently as 15,000 years ago, perhaps a little earlier. These two competing hypotheses really are incompatible. The evidence for very early settlement, as early as 40,000 years ago, is very weak indeed, and in fact, in my view, is probably non-existent. A number of archaeological sites, especially in South America, have been put forward as evidence for very early settlement. The best known of these is a site called Bocarado, Bocarao de Pedra Ferrado in northeastern Brazil, which is said to contain the evidence of 45,000 year old human occupation, followed by other visits around 28,000 and more recently 10,000 years before present. The evidence consists of purported halves and flaked stone tools. But a team of experts on this whole first settlement issue visited the site some years ago and showed beyond any reasonable scientific debate, doubt that the earliest occupations these alleged hearths and stone tools were in fact of natural origin caused by natural geological phenomena. And this is the problem with documenting first settlement. What is actual evidence that's acceptable? The answer is humanly made stone tools. The answer is fractured bone. Exactly, in a way, the same problems as you have as studying very early humans. The earliest documented evidence, if you look at evidence as absolutely undoubtedly human, of human settlement anywhere in the Americas dates to no earlier than about 14,000 years ago from the Monte Verde site in southern Chile, which I'll discuss a little later. Very early settlement, earlier than that, is hard to support for another reason. Not only is there really no convincing archaeological evidence in the Americas, so far it could always change, but the earliest known human occupation of extreme northeast Asia, that's extreme northeast Siberia, a bitterly cold, very, very, very difficult country to live in, savagely cold and inhospitable at the height of the last glaciation. The earliest human occupation only dates to about 18,000 years ago from the Lena Valley, a river valley. So maybe settlement wasn't earlier than then. Again, so little has been done in Siberia that we cannot be totally sure. But beyond Northeast Asia stretched the open reaches of the Bering Land Bridge, a low, flat, but slightly undulating landmass that joined Siberia and Alaska at the time of low sea levels. Together with the adjacent higher ground in Siberia and Alaska, this large area formed a now severed continent which the geologists often call Beringia after the Bering Sea, and of course the Bering Strait is named after Vitus Bering, the famous Russian explorer who 
sailed through it in 1743. It's a nice term, and it's the only well-validated sunken continent we have. Beringia was a treeless, arctic land, with violent climate extremes and strong winter winds, all of which kept animal and human populations low. How do we know about the environment of Beringia? Portions of the ancient steppe tundra have been preserved in bogs and other circumstances where it has been possible to reconstruct them. And one thing seems quite certain. Settlement on this inhospitable land bridge may well have been very difficult indeed, and at the best sparse, until temperatures warmed after 15,000 years ago. But when the temperatures started warming at the same time, sea levels began to raise, rise relatively rapidly, and by 9,000 years ago, the Bering Strait had come into existence and Beringia had become a sunken continent. So this was a pretty inhospitable place. And the question is, was it inhabited at all during the late Ice Age or immediately afterwards? We don't know. During the same period, during the late Ice Age, with its bitter cold, another fact and reality enters into the equation. Almost all of Canada and the northern part of the United States were covered with two vast ice sheets, hundreds of feet thick. These ice sheets covered the Great Lakes and extended as far south as Seattle and mantled the, mantled the Rockies. At the same time, sea levels were 300 feet lower than today. Access from the north into the heart of the Americas inland was probably almost impossible for Stone Age foragers. And anyone who set sea sail on late Ice Age seas must have had extremely sophisticated watercraft. And we do not know whether, in fact, they had them. Probably not. I believe that the first settlement of the Americas probably happened over land. So there were the realities geographically. And it seems very likely that settlement before at the earliest, the very late, late Ice Age, was probably impossible. The question then is, when did it occur, and who were the people who did it? For more than a century, scientists have pointed to the biological similarities between Northeast Asians, Siberians, and Native Americans. It's interesting that ancient Americans, such as we know them from their skeletal remains, show fewer variations in their dental morphology than Eastern Asians. They display dental features that also occur in Northeast Asia, but not to the West, not in Eurasia. Places like Meserich, the people from there are quite different. A biological anthropologist, Christy Turner, believes that the first Americans probably ultimately originated, if you really get into the ultimate origins, in northern China or even further south in Asia. But the crucible for their origin was, of course, ultimately Siberia. Then there's another source of evidence which has come into being, and that is, in recent years, the studies of mitochondrial DNA, which we talked about at length when talking about modern humans. Studies of Native Americans suggest that all Native Americans were descended from a single, somewhat diverse group of Asians whose genetic makeup was somewhat like that of modern Mongolians. Now this fits, it's logical, because Siberia, as we said in the previous lecture, had influences culturally from the south, from the desert areas of China, and also from the West, and one would expect the people to live there to be quite a mix, but predominantly Asian. So biologically, it seems that the Native Americans ultimately came from Northeast Asia. Then there's the issue of language. Language history is an extremely controversial subject, and I must confess as an archaeologist who has a passion about chronological control, about dating, 
I distrust any attempt to look at languages which are so transitory and change so frequently back into the past. But extensive studies have been made of Native American languages. And at least one linguist, Joseph Greenberg, appear, believes they all belong in one large Amerind family. With two smaller groups, Aleutian, Eskimo, and Nadine. These three groups appear to have arrived separately. This conclusion is debated extensively, but it seems very likely that the linguistic roots of Native Americans come ultimately all from a relatively small reservoir. Now all of these biological sources and the linguistic source suggest that the first Americans arrived relatively recently. Why? Because they have not had the time to develop the great diversity you find in other parts of the world. If you accept a relatively recent date, and notice I'm not giving you a precise date here, the question is, what were these people like? How did they behave? Who were they? Here, logic comes in. Who would they have been likely to have been living in an environment where there were nine-month winters? Answer, Ice Age terrestrial hunter-gatherers who were expert at hunting game, whose population density was very low, who lived a life of high mobility and were capable of hunting animals large and small. They may well have crossed into Sib from Siberia into Alaska overland, pursuing Arctic animals, large and small, and living off some summer and spring plant foods. Beyond that, we know very little about their culture. This is a general statement. But it seems very likely that the ultimate ancestry of ancient North American culture was among the Stone Age peoples of Northeast Siberia who were adapted to extreme cold and made their living by being very mobile and relying fairly heavily on game of all kinds. But an issue comes up here immediately, and that is the issue of diversity. They probably ate any food they could find. And as you will find, as the Ice Age ended and the climate warmed up in North America, hunter-gatherer societies in the Americas became more and more diverse in their food quests. But this flexibility, this diversity, clearly dates back to the Ice Age when this flexibility and opportunism and diversity was terribly important to survival. If you accept this very general scenario, like many archaeologists do, they believe that this crossing took place either very late in the Ice Age or as temperature wa temperatures warmed and sea levels began to rise after about 15,000 years ago. But here again there's a deviation. A minority of scholars hypothesized that the first Americans were maritime people who used skin boats and hunted sea mammals and skirted ice-strewn ice coasts to arrive in a new world from Siberia. Unfortunately, this hypothesis is unprovable because their sites, if they existed, are buried below modern sea level. In any case, I believe that this sort of adaptation probably was much later when sea craft became more elaborated. I think a land crossing was more likely. But again, as with the Cro-Magnons, as with Homo sapiens, as with the Neanderthals, this was not a deliberate migration. They didn't say, we are going to Alaska this afternoon. It was part of the unending routine of hunting and gathering in vast, inhospitable landscapes where the secret of survival was extreme mobility and flexibility of social life. The bands would hive off from one another and this inexorably brought small numbers of people across the Bering Land Bridge into Alaska and then south. The first known settlement of Alaska, which incidentally was largely ice-free during the Lace Ice Age, comes from the Tanana Valley, southeast of Fairbanks, Alaska, and dates to about 13,700 years ago.
The Dry Creek site in the Nanana Valley vat of the northern foothills of the Alaska Range dates to about the same period. Now these sites, and we needn't worry about the specifics here, and several others, belong within a poorly defined, and I use the archaeological term here, Northern Paleo-Indian tradition, which is a northern equivalent of the widespread Paleo-Indian traditions to the south, described later in this lecture. If humans first settled Alaska around 13,000 years ago or slightly earlier, when and how did they penetrate south of the great ice sheets? This clearly is a fundamental question. Did they travel by land or along the continental shelf that mantled much of the Alaskan coast at the time? For years, geologists believed that a narrow, ice-free corridor led from Alaska into the heart of North America during the late Ice Age. One of the ice sheets covered the Rockies, the other central and eastern Canada. But we now know that this corridor to the south, which many years ago was almost considered like a freeway for people to go up and down, never existed. The two ice sheets were linked. The only way that early settlers could have passed south over land would have been after 15,000 years ago when the glaciers did retreat and the land opened up, perhaps even slightly later than that. Could they have then come down the coast? There is no evidence for coastal migration, but remember that sea levels were much lower and it's entirely possible that some groups moved southward along the coast into the Pacific Northwest. Again, the sites are under water. So, you pays your money and you takes your choice. Most people tend to favor the terrestrial route, but in fact, it's unproven. We do not know how the first Americans came south or when they did. The earliest archaeological evidence for human settlements south of the ice sheets is also disputed, but a series of sites hint at occupation after 14,000 years ago. The best known of these sites is Monte Verde in southern Chile, radiocarbon dated to about 14,000 years ago, the earliest well-documented human settlement. The site, which is way south, is a small settlement of wooden shelters in a forest environment preserved in a waterlogged valley floor. These people were both hunting and collecting plant foods and making a lot of their toolkit out of wood. There were other South American sites, still not well documented, which may date to this period. In North America, the Meadowcroft Rock Shelter near Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania may date to as early as 14,000 years ago, but the dates of the lower levels of the site are also controversial because the dating has been questioned. There are mammoth kills in Florida and sites in West Virginia that may date to about the same time. It's only at about 13,200 years ago that we really come into focus because suddenly the archaeological record explodes. It becomes more visible. There are many more sites. So the scenario that evolves out of all this is probably most likely the first settlement of the Americas occurred around 15,000 years ago. There, I've stuck my neck out. Maybe slightly earlier, maybe slightly later. But I think the critical dynamic here was the end of the Ice Age, when sea levels rose, glaciers began to retreat, and the climate in the far north was somewhat more livable. Only a teeny number of people came across. And they didn't come across in one group, they came across again and again, lots of groups. Some groups may have come over and died out. It's a very complex process we can never hope to understand. And then at some point, maybe as early as 14,000 years ago, maybe earlier, maybe slightly later, but certainly by 13,200, a well-established radiocarbon date, there were humans living in the Americas. These people, in small numbers, 
exploded into an uninhabited continent, teeming with animals large and small. Many large animals, which were soon to become extinct, animals totally unfamiliar in America today, like mammoth, mastodon, wild horses, camelids, and others. How quickly did they spread through the continent? We don't know. Some people believe that the spread took only a few thousand years, maybe less. Others believe it was a slower process. But the numbers at the beginning were very small. We know something about these people thanks to the archaeological sites dating to after 13,200. And these are the sites of the famous Clovis tradition, named after a site in Clovis, New Mexico, where the distinctive stone projectile points of these people were first found. Small projectile points with a longitudinal fluting flake which thins the base of the point so it can be easily mounted in a shaft or foreshaft. These were people who had spears and spear throwers who were extremely adept hunters and it is quite clear although the evidence is still lacking that these people had an ancestry among the long established stone age game hunting traditions of the far north. Indeed, in the earlier days of the study of the first settlement, everyone thought of the Clovis people as big game hunters, with a capital B and a capital G, that this was the stereotype that big game hunters thundered into America and decimated the game, spreading rapidly through the continent. Today, we have a much more diverse view of the Clovis people, that in undoubtedly they were capable of adapting to very different environmental conditions. Many of them relied heavily on plant foods and probably got much of their diet from edible vegetation of all sorts of kinds. Their numbers, however, were small. They were highly mobile. Their territories were probably large, but we do know that they focused very closely on fine-grained tool-making stone used to make their projectile points. In other words, they were people who were beginning to exchange goods between one another. They're best documented from the Great Plains, where there were a series of kill sites of their points found in association with the bones of mammoth and bison. And it's quite clear that they were, to a considerable degree, when the opportunity arose, and remember, like all hunters, they were opportunistic, that they were going for the large animal. Why? It yields a lot of meat. Probably many of them they drove into swamps, rendered them helpless, and then killed them. We don't know. But about 13,000 years ago, these large animals, the famous megafauna, as they're often called, became extinct suddenly. This is a great debate. Was it humans? that caused these animals to become extinct and hunted them out of existence, particularly the slow breeding animal like the mammoth or the mastin? Or were these animals which had flourished through the Ice Age the victims of warmer temperatures and increasingly arid conditions in North America and South America? We don't know, but most people believe that humans probably played some role in the extinction of these large animals. Another thing is certain, by about 12,900 years ago, when the Clovis tradition abruptly disappears, humans were living in every part of North America exposed by the ice sheets from the fringes of the tundra by the ice sheets right into Central America with its tropical rainforests and throughout South America. There were people living down by the Strait of Magellan by 9,000 years ago, that this settlement occurred rapidly. And once humans got into America, they stayed there, diversified and flourished, as we'll find out later in this course. In this lecture, we've looked at some of the vigorous controversies surrounding the first settlement of the Americas. We've built a scenario and concluded that the first settlement occurred soon after the end of the Ice Age, perhaps as early as 15,000 years ago. We described the routes for first settlement and the probable manner in which it occurred.
and we concluded that the first Americans were highly versatile mobile hunter-gatherers who settled North America then moved southward with considerable speed, preying on large animals which became extinct about 13,000 years ago. And in the next lecture, we'll describe what happened next.